Welcome to another deep dive. Today we're going to be looking at something a little different, I think. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And now for something completely different, right. as they say. So yeah. we're going to be exploring the intersection of humor, wisdom, and uh, and people who really kind of shake things up a little bit. People who, mm-hmm. who challenge norms. Yes. And, you know, we've got a really interesting mix of sources here. You've given me some... Um, some writings from Buddhist monks. Right. And also some stuff about avant-garde musicians. And then even some more like just secular kind of thinkers. Yeah. I'm already sensing some really fascinating connections, I have to say. Oh, I think this is going to be a really rich deep dive. I think it's um, it's such a great opportunity to kind of uncover the power of um, of challenging norms and the the unexpected ways that humor can be used to actually convey wisdom. Yeah. And also... The, re- the really important role of support systems, you know, when things get a little rough. Yeah. Um, and you might even find some kind of surprising parallels between figures like um, mm. uh, Jean Brahm and, yeah. B- yeah. believe it or not, comedians like Bill Bailey. Mm. Both of them <laughs> yeah, use love, humor love to, to kind of subvert yeah. authority and, and deliver those mm. little aha moments, even though they're operating on very different stages. Yeah, it's like they're two sides of the same coin, Yeah, but reflecting something really important about the human experience. Absolutely. So let's just jump right in to our first theme, which is giving back, moving forward. And this is all about how volunteering not only benefits, of course, the people you're helping, right? but it can also be this incredible catalyst for personal growth. It really yeah. can. And you know, yeah. this reminds me of, of Ajahn Brahm's teachings on dana, which is a Pali word yeah, meaning generosity or giving. Yeah, dana is a key principle in the Buddhist path. Yeah. And it encompasses more than just giving material things. It's the yeah. cultivation of a generous heart. Right. And when we give, when we give, whether it's time or resources, but we're also giving ourselves the opportunity to grow in wisdom yeah. and compassion. Right. And often it's through these acts of giving that we experience unexpected shifts in perspective. Yeah. Just as we mentioned with Ajahn Brahm's story of the businessman. Okay. Um, and this is a, a cornerstone of, of Buddhist practice. Right. But it goes beyond just material donations. It's about cultivating a generous spirit, a willingness to give of yourself, of your time, your energy. And, you. and, and, and very often it's through these acts of service that we actually discover unexpected strengths and, right. and new perspectives on life. Yeah, that's absolutely right. There's a Buddhist phrase, the hand that gives gathers. It shows us that we gain more through the process of giving than we lose. Yeah, you know, I've, I've seen this firsthand with, with my own family. Mm-hmm. My cousin, who was going through kind of a rough time a while back, started volunteering at an animal shelter. Oh, wow. And, you know, I, I think she went in thinking, I'm going to help these animals. Mm-hmm. But it really ended up kind of transforming her whole outlook on life. Yeah. She learned mm. so much about compassion and responsibility and and this power of unconditional mm. love, not just for the animals, but for herself. That's such a great point. The process of giving in many ways is just as yeah. important for our own spirit, spiritual self Right. And it reflects what the Buddha often taught. When we practice generosity, we open our hearts to greater understanding and peace. Yeah, and that's a beautiful example of how Donna can lead to unexpected inner transformation. Yeah. Um, you know, in one of his talks, Ajahn Brahm actually tells a story about a wealthy businessman who reluctantly agrees to help out at a homeless shelter. Oh, wow. Um, and initially he's hesitant, you know, he feels uncomfortable. Sure. But as he starts to spend time with the people there, listening to their stories, sharing meals with them, his perspective starts to shift dramatically. And he realizes mm-hmm. that true wealth actually lies in connection and compassion and compassion. not just in those material possessions. Exactly. True wealth in, in Buddhist terms is not measured by what we own, but like by the depth of our relationships and our capacity for kindness as well. That's a great story. Mm. It really shows that it's a, a two-way street, this giving back. Absolutely. It is mutual. Now, when we give, we also receive. Sometimes what we receive is far more valuable than we ever imagined. We offer something to others, but you know what we receive in return is, is so much greater than we could ever expect. So true. And speaking of, of finding strength through shared experiences that leads us perfectly into our next theme stronger together yes you know you share a really fascinating story with me 
about these seven brothers learning about unity from their father. Ah, yes, yes. The father basically presents them with a bundle of sticks. Okay. And challenges them to break it. And, and of, of course, individually, each stick snaps pretty easily, right? Yeah. But when they're all bundled together, they become unbreakable. Right. So it's a really potent kind of visual metaphor for the power of unity. Yeah. And that strength that we find in community. You know, this reminds me of the Sangha, the monastic yeah. community. And there's a teaching from the Buddha where he, he emphasizes how right. essential it is for monks and lay people alike to lean on one another. Yeah. Just like those sticks, individuals may break under pressure, but united in purpose and virtue, the Sangha becomes a source of incredible strength. Yeah, you know that imagery makes me think of... Um, Bayanihan, which is a tradition in the Philippines. Oh, tell yeah, me about yeah, it. yeah, I've heard of that. That's that's a beautiful practice, truly embodying the essence of community and selflessness. Yeah, it's a beautiful tradition. It literally translates to being in a Bayan, mm -hmm. which means community. And so, what happens is when a family needs to move their house, the whole village comes together. Wow! To literally lift and carry the structure to its new location. That's amazing. That's such a powerful image, and the essence of Bayanihan really mirrors the teachings of interconnectedness, how we all need to support each other through life's challenges. It's, it's this incredible display of shared responsibility, support, mm. and even celebration. Yeah. It's really beautiful. That's really powerful. You know, it speaks to that deep human need for connection and belonging. Yeah. Um, a need that's also echoed in the Buddhist teachings through the story of Patakara. Okay. Um, she endures unimaginable loss. You know, her husband, her children, her parents, they all perish. Oh my gosh. And grief stricken and utterly alone, she wanders aimlessly until she encounters the Buddha. Oh wow. Yeah. And, and it's in the community of others who had experienced similar loss that Padachara found healing. That's a profound lesson on, on how we often heal in the presence of others who have suffered in similar ways. And compassion and shared grief can lead to really profound healing. And and he guides her to connect with others who have also experienced similar pain. Uh -huh. and, and in that shared grief, she finds solace, strength, and even a path to healing. You, you know, it's, it's a reminder that we don't have to go through tough times alone. We don't. Exactly. And Community doesn't just exist in physical spaces anymore. It can be found online too. And, you know, thankfully these days, finding that support and connection can happen in so many ways, even online. That's right. Think of those doctors on call groups that have emerged. You yeah. know, it's, it's amazing how technology can actually facilitate these networks of care, mm -hmm. connecting people in need with medical advice, emotional support. Yeah, and it's, it's kind of a modern expression of what, interconnectedness, isn't it? The digital sangha, so to speak, support systems evolving in our times. Right. You know, they kind of mirror that same spirit of Bayanihan that you described. Yeah. And, and what's really fascinating is how quickly these online communities can mobilize. Yeah. You know, they kind of mirror that same spirit of Bionihan that you described. Absolutely. You know, it speaks to our inherent drive to connect, to help, to find solace in those shared experiences. Yeah. Even in this digital age. Right, right. But of course, life isn't always smooth sailing, is it? It is not. Sometimes we're kind of thrown off balance, mm. forced to navigate the unexpected. Which brings us to our next theme, riding the waves. Okay. It's about learning to adapt and find resilience when we're faced with that inevitable change. Right. That's life, isn't it? I mean, it's like the first time you try to surf or skateboard. You're, you know, you're excited, you're a little scared, and then, bam. Yeah. You get knocked off your board by a wave. Yeah. You yeah. wipe out. You swallow some seawater. You get tumbled around. Yeah. Maybe feel a little discouraged. But eventually you learn to read the ocean, to anticipate the waves, and to find that exhilarating feeling of actually riding the flow. Yeah. And that's a perfect analogy because it really highlights the importance of adaptability and recognizing that we can't always control the waves, but we can learn to navigate them. You know, trying to resist changes like, what's his name, uh, King Canute commanding the tides to stop. Right. It's it's a futile effort. 
we've we've seen that play out in the in the business world as well. Oh, absolutely. Remember BlackBerry? Oh yeah. They were at the top of their game for a while. But they failed to adapt to the whole smartphone revolution. It did, yeah. yeah it did, and ultimately yeah. lost their, their market share. Big time. Yeah. Mm, it's a cautionary tale, isn't it? It is. For all of us, whether it's in our personal lives or in our work, we need to cultivate that agility, that willingness to learn new things and adapt to the ever-changing landscape around us. But amidst all that change and potential chaos, it's also crucial to find those moments of stillness and peace. Which leads us very nicely into our next theme, mindful moments. Oh, yeah. You know, this one's close to my heart because finding those pockets of calm within the storm yes is so essential for maintaining balance and perspective yeah it's not about shutting out the world or pretending right. everything's but it's perfect. about training our minds to find that inner peace even when things are turbulent around us it is and imagine if you were like a stormy sea right waves crashing the wind is howling now picture that same sea gradually calming, transforming okay. into a tranquil That's the lake. kind of internal shift that we can achieve through mindfulness. Yeah, and it's about developing that unshakable inner calm, like the nun who's calmly carrying a bowl of oil during a thunderstorm. Oh, yes. I read about that in one of the sources. Mm. Despite all the chaos swirling around her, she's so focused, so present, ah. that not mm. a single drop stills. Yeah, and it's about that cultivating that unwavering focus, that internal right. resilience. And, you know, sometimes finding that peace just starts with a simple shift in perspective. Yeah. You were sharing mm. an anecdote earlier about encountering a seemingly intimidating person at a pub. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I want to hear more about that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. I, was, I was actually yeah. ready to make a quick exit because I was convinced this person was going to be trouble. Uh, but then I thought, you know what? I'm going to challenge my assumptions. Instead of letting fear dictate my actions, I, I chose to just approach the situation with curiosity and openness. Yeah. And guess what? We ended up having a really delightful conversation. Wow. Mm. My, my initial judgment couldn't have been further from the truth. Wow, that's so powerful. I mean, it's such a perfect example of how our perceptions can create unnecessary yeah. barriers. You know, when we choose to approach situations with kindness and curiosity, we we open ourselves up to those unexpected connections yeah. and often realize that our initial fears were totally unfounded. Exactly. It reminds me of the Buddha's teaching on right view, how important it is to like check our assumptions before letting them yeah, dictate like our actions. Be kind for everyone you meet is fighting a hard battle. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. We never truly know what's going on in someone else's life. Exactly. And a little compassion can go a long it can. way. And speaking of the power of small acts, let's move on to a theme that's truly inspiring. The ripple of kindness. Yes. This theme explores how seemingly small acts of service can create a ripple effect. They can. Spreading outward and impacting countless lives. It's the essence of dana as well. Even the smallest act of generosity can have effects far beyond what we might ever see. It's like dropping a pebble in a pond and watching the ripples kind of spread out endlessly. It's a beautiful reminder that we all have the power to make a difference, no matter how insignificant our actions might seem. Mm. Yes. Mm. And, you know, history is full of examples of this. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Think of Mahatma Gandhi's philosophy of nonviolent resistance, (laughs) which ignited a movement for independence in India. Yeah. Or Greta Thunberg, uh-huh. who, at just 15 years old, started a school strike that inspired millions of young people around the world wow. to demand action powerful. on climate change. Very powerful. There. Right? Um, mm-hmm. In one of the sources, we actually learn about uh, Master Cheng Yen, who's a Buddhist nun who started a bamboo bank movement in Taiwan. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. She's a, a wonderful example of how small acts of kindness okay. can um, really multiply she over time. To contribute a small amount of money each mm. day. Okay. Just a few coins to help those in need. Well, wow. these small acts of generosity, so they multiply by thousands of contributors, eventually funded the construction of oh, what? Oh five goodness. hospitals? Yeah. It's incredible. Yeah. And it really shows that collective action can amplify the impact of individual kindness. It, it can. can. Like each of us plays a part in that greater whole. Definitely. Which brings us to our next theme. Bridges, not walls. Oh, I love this one. Yeah. And, you know, this theme really resonates with, with the Buddhist concept of metta, which translates to loving kindness or compassion. 
Yeah, meta. I mean, that's a central idea to, and central to the idea of recognizing also our interconnectedness, extending our hearts beyond our own limited sphere and embracing strength that we find in shared experiences and mutual aid. Yes. It reminds me of, of my own experience hitchhiking across Europe when I was much younger. It's a, kind of a wide-eyed traveler. Yeah. Relying on the kindness of strangers to get from one place to the next. Wow. It was it was a bit daunting at first. Sure. But I quickly learned that that most people are inherently good and willing to help, even if it's just offering a ride or a meal. Yeah. You know? Yeah. That's trust in human goodness, in kindness. It's something the Buddha spoke of often. When we extend kindness, we're contributing to a vast network of compassion that connects us all. It's the same web of support that you experience there. Yeah, no, I really relate to that. And you know, those acts of kindness, no uh -huh. matter how small, can create a web yeah. of support that stretches far and wide. Yeah. yeah. You know, there's a story in one of your sources about a woman named Lindsay who <laughs> Yeah. Had a chance little. encounter with a monk in Bangkok, right. and he mm. gave her directions, a little bit of advice, and went on his way. Years later, she found herself drawn to a meditation retreat in southern Thailand, where she unexpectedly met you. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's right. It turned out that the monk she had met years ago was also a close friend of mine. It's like these invisible threads weaving uh, through our lives, connecting us in ways we could never you know, imagine. That's right. Yeah. It's a beautiful testament, actually, to the interconnectedness of all things. Yeah. And a reminder that we're never truly alone on this journey. Our lives, much like the natural world, yeah. go through various phases and cycles of change, which brings us to our next theme, seasons, seasons of, change. of change. I love that. So it's like the nature has its uh, spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Our lives also have their seasons of growth, blossoming, letting go, and quiet reflection. That's right. Learning to embrace the natural flow of these seasons can help us navigate life's transitions with greater ease and grace. It can. And think of think of spring, you know? Yeah. A mm. time of new beginnings when mm -hmm. buds burst forth with fresh energy mm -hmm. and, and life just seems full of possibility. Full of possibility. Yeah. yeah. Summer, a time of abundance when everything's in full bloom, vibrant and alive. Mm. Right. right. Then comes autumn. A time of harvest when when we reap the fruits of our labor and, and begin to let go of what no longer serves us. Yeah. And finally, winter, a time of quiet retreat. Right. right. When mm. we turn inward, reflect on the past year and prepare for that next cycle of growth. It's, it's a beautiful metaphor for the different stages of life. It is. And just like we wouldn't try to force a flower to bloom in the middle of winter, I mean, we can learn to honor the natural rhythm of our own personal seasons. Embracing the current season, I suppose, recognizing its unique gifts and challenges can bring us such a sense of peace and acceptance, even amidst the uncertainty. Yeah. You know, I remember when I finally learned to drive, I was in my late 30s. Oh, wow. <laughs> and it felt like a whole new season was beginning. Yeah. There was a sense of freedom and independence that yeah. came with it. Yeah, but also a bit of fear, I imagine. Yeah. Sure. The, the Buddha he often described fear as something we face when stepping into the unknown. Yet these moments of stepping forward often lead to the most profound growth. We can. Yeah. Yeah. And as we move through these various seasons, it's crucial to cultivate a sense of balance and stability. Which brings us to our next theme. The art of balance. The art of balance. Okay. Yeah. Finding balance in life. Mm. It, it really is a lot like learning to walk a tightrope. Oh, it is. It takes mm -hmm. practice, focus, and, and a healthy dose of self-compassion. Absolutely. When we inevitably stumble. Yes. Yeah. Imagine yourself standing on that tightrope, you yeah. know, feeling the sway beneath your feet. Yeah. Gradually, you start to develop a sense of stability, yeah. adjusting to those subtle shifts and, and maintaining your equilibrium. Right. This reminds me of a story I read about this famous tightrope walker who after this dramatic fall, calmly continued his routine yeah. as if nothing had happened. Yeah. It was it was a remarkable display of resilience, focus, and the ability to let go of fear and self-doubt. Yes. Yeah. And in Buddhist practice, balance is key. Finding that middle path between extremes. And sometimes finding that balance means letting go of our need to control everything. Humor can be a powerful antidote to stress, oh, yeah. reminding us to not take ourselves too seriously. 
you know, thinking back to that encounter I had at the pub, yeah. it, it was humor that ultimately broke the tension yeah. and, and allowed for a genuine connection. Yeah. Yeah. Humor disarms our defenses. It does. And creates a space for understanding and empathy. Yes. It's a powerful reminder that even in the face of the unknown, a little laughter can go a long way. Absolutely. It lines the load connects us to others, helps us to navigate lives up and downs, and downs with more grace. And it does, it does. Yeah. So it seems like we've, we've just scratched the surface of these fascinating themes. Yeah, we have. And we've covered so much ground already. We have, but, but we'll delve deeper into these ideas and explore even more intriguing connections in the next part of our deep dive. I'm looking forward to it. Me too. Welcome back to the deep dive. You know, as we're exploring all these different ideas, it's interesting to see how that theme of balance keeps coming up. Finding that equilibrium amidst all the chaos and uncertainty. Yeah, it's tricky, isn't it? It's it's a constant dance, this balancing act between, you know, holding on to what we know and embracing the new and the unexpected. It really is. And sometimes you just need a good dose of humor to kind of lighten the load. Absolutely. Gain a fresh perspective. Human can often give us that shift in perspective, right. especially when it comes to those in positions of power. Which actually reminds me our next theme, working class heroes and kings, roadies, dukes, and duchesses really dives into those dynamics. It does, doesn't it? It does, yeah. It's, it's a really fascinating exploration of that interplay between ordinary people and those who hold authority, Yeah. both mm. both in secular and spiritual settings. You know, you did say think about the music roadie, world, right? for instance. Oh. You've got the rock stars on stage, mm. right? Right. Basking in the spotlight. Yeah. yeah. But behind the scenes, it's the roadies Live who eight. make the magic happen. It yeah. is. You know? Yeah. They're the unsung heroes. They're often overlooked. Totally. Mm -hmm. But but absolutely essential. Right. They're the ones setting up the stage, uh -huh. tuning the instruments, troubleshooting all those technical glitches, yeah. generally mm -hmm. keeping the show running smoothly. And they really, they are, really the are. They're the backbone. They, they are. Even they though they are, rarely, even though they're are rarely in the limelight. In the limelight. Right. Right. And and we see a similar dynamic in, in Theravada Buddhism as well. Oh, absolutely. You know, monks, despite their vows of poverty and simplicity, can attain a kind of king-like status within the community. They can. They're revered for their wisdom and dedication to spiritual practice. Yes. And they're supported by lay people who offer food, donations, and other forms of assistance, right. which creates this intriguing tension between humility yes. and hierarchy. It does. It really makes you wonder about the true nature of power. It does. How is it attained? How is it perceived? <laughs> right. And most importantly, how do those in power actually use it? I mean, do they reinforce existing structures or challenge them? Do they use their platform to elevate others or simply to boost their own ego? That's the question. It's like that age old question. Are they a court jester or are they a king? Right. You know, the court jester, often dismissed as a mere entertainer, actually holds a really unique position. They do. They can use humor to speak truth to power, yeah. to point out the emperor's <laughs> new the clothes, yeah. so to speak, right. without facing the same kind of consequences as those who challenge That's authority directly. True. Right. But just as ability to mock or question authority from the sidelines often grants them a kind of immunity, which can be a powerful tool for social critique. Right. That, that makes me think of someone like Bill Bailey. Oh, yeah. You know, he's he's a master of of weaving together that highbrow humor with with sharp social commentary. Yes, he's, he's, he can effortlessly hmm. reference Chaucer yeah. in one breath. Yes. And then have you rolling in the aisles with his hilarious observations about everyday life. And while doing so, he's poking fun at the pompousness of those in power, exposing their hypocrisies while making us laugh and question that question what they're at. Yeah. Yeah, he embodies that playful irreverence. Yes, that, that allows us to to laugh at those in power. Yes. without diminishing the seriousness of the issues at hand. That's right. It's a it's a really powerful tool for inspiring critical thinking. It is. It makes us more aware of how power dynamics shape our world, while also disarming some of the fear and rigidity we often feel around authority. Our next theme delves into a topic that's. It's often met with a lot of resistance, I think. Oh, yeah. And that's psychedelics and spiritual awakening. Yeah. It's a subject that can, you know, spark you intense it debate. It can. With some viewing psychedelics as a gateway to profound mm -hmm. spiritual insights. Right. And others seeing them as dangerous and irresponsible. Yeah. 
It's definitely a complex issue. It is, and it requires nuanced, careful consideration. And psychedelics can have very different effects depending on the person, context, and intention behind their use. Right. The experiences people have with these substances mm. can vary widely. They can, yeah. Depending mm. on the individual, the context, mm. the dosage, and, and many other factors. Yeah, it's not it's not a one size yeah. fits all kind of thing. Yeah. And even within the realm of spiritual yeah. exploration. Yes. There are diverse perspectives on the role of psychedelics. Absolutely. Absolutely. Someone like Ram Das, for example, he saw them as a tool for breaking down ego structures and experiencing interconnectedness. But he also emphasized the importance of responsible use. Helping individuals break down their ego structures and experience a sense of interconnectedness with all things. Yes, but even even Ram Das emphasized the importance of responsible use. Right. Proper guidance and, and a strong foundation in, in spiritual practice. Mm -hmm. In one of his books, he actually recounts a story about a friend who had a terrifying experience with LSD oh, wow. because he approached it with a reckless mindset, seeking a quick fix or a shortcut to enlightenment. Oh, yeah. So it's it's not about seeking thrills or escapism, but rather about using these substances as a as a tool for introspection. Yeah. Self-discovery and, and deepening one's spiritual practice. Yeah, exactly. But we must also acknowledge that not everyone has positive experiences with their psychedelics. And for some, it can exacerbate mental they issues can. Or, or lead to like challenging emotional yeah. states. So, so approaching this topic with caution and discernment is, yeah. is absolutely essential. Yes, it yeah. is. And of course, we, we can't ignore the legal implications. Right. In many parts of the world, uh, psychedelics are still illegal and using them carries significant risks. Yeah. But regardless of one's stance on the, you know, the legality or the morality of psychedelics, it's clear that their potential impact on consciousness and spirituality continues to fascinate and intrigue people from all walks of life. Absolutely. Speaking of intrigue, let's maybe shift gears a little bit to a theme that seems to kind of defy conventional expectations. Okay. Millionaire with a regular guy image. Millionaire with a regular guy image. Yeah. It might seem like a contradiction in terms. Yeah. But it really speaks to the idea that true wealth isn't always measured in material possessions. Right. It's about authenticity, humility, and that ability to, to connect with people from all walks of life. Exactly. Regardless of their social status or financial standing. Yes. You know, think of, think of Ajahn Brahm, for instance. Oh, yeah. I mean, he's an internationally renowned Buddhist teacher. He is. The author of best-selling yeah. books. Yes. The Abbot of a Thriving mm -hmm. Monastery. Right. But despite all of his fame and influence, he's known for his down-to-earth demeanor. His infectious laughter and his ability to just relate to people on a human level. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, in one of his talks, he he actually recounts a story about being invited to speak at a high society <laughs> That's the gathering. One with the dress. Oh, wow. And and he arrives in his the, simple monk's robes. Yeah. Said, feeling a bit out of place amidst all the permitted. opulent surroundings. Yeah. But instead of trying to fit in or impress anyone, he simply shares his teachings with his characteristic humor and warmth. Right. And and it's that genuine unpretentious yeah. approach that really resonates yeah. most deeply with the audience yeah it, it's a good reminder that true leadership isn't about putting yourself on a pedestal it's not it's about meeting people where they are yes with empathy and understanding that's right and that approachability can be incredibly disarming mm. it can yeah you know it, oh. it breaks down barriers it creates yeah. a space uh -huh. for genuine connection yeah. right it's like that moment when you realize that Someone you've admired from afar yes. is just as human as you are, mm. with their own quirks and vulnerabilities and sense of humor. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. It makes them more relatable, more likable, and ultimately more influential. Yeah, and that influence can be used to inspire positive change. It can. To challenge like outdated norms, create a more just and compassionate world. Mm. Which brings us to a theme that's all about disruption. Ruffling feathers, stirring, stirring the, pot, the pot, shaking the tree. Shaking the tree. Yes. You know, it's about those who dare to challenge the status quo. Yes. To to poke the bear, to wow. to make people uncomfortable, all in the name of progress. Yeah. Yes. These are the individuals who aren't afraid to rock the boat, to speak truth to power. 
right. to push boundaries, even if it means facing criticism or resistance. Right. They're the ones who kind of shake us out of our complacency and yeah. force us to confront those uncomfortable mm. truths. Yeah, yeah. Like Ajahn Brahm, for example. Oh, yeah. He's a respected figure within the Theravada Buddhist tradition, but he hasn't shied away from challenging certain monastic norms or advocating for greater inclusivity, especially for women in monastic life. He's He's been a real pioneer in mm. that regard. And and his willingness to to question authority, to speak his mind, has at times, uh, you know, you ruffled some again. feathers within the the traditional mm -hmm. Buddhist community. Right. But but his courage and and commitment to his convictions have also inspired many others to to yeah. question those outdated norms and to push for yeah. positive change within the tradition. It's like that saying: the squeaky wheel gets the grease. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes you have to make some noise. You do to get things moving to bring attention to injustices, to ignite change. And that can be incredibly uncomfortable. It can. Both for the person shaking things up. Yes. And for those who are who are used to the status quo. Yeah, it's about disrupting that complacency. Right. Challenging those assumptions, creating a space for, for new ideas to emerge. Right. And and it's often through those disruptions that, that we see the greatest progress, yeah. both, both personally and collectively. Absolutely. It's like giving that um, snow globe a good shape. Yes. It might seem chaotic at first. They might. But once the snow settles, you see things from a whole new perspective. Yeah. And and sometimes that shakeup comes from unexpected sources. It does. Yeah. And for those who operate outside the traditional power structures. Yes. Which brings us to a theme that that explores those contrasting approaches to knowledge, wisdom, and problem mm -hmm. solving. Okay. The fox and the hedgehog. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. it's based on that ancient Greek mm -hmm. parable. Isaiah Berlin. That wow. states, the fox knows right. many things, but the hedgehog knows one big thing. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. The the fox represents yeah, adaptability, actors. cunning, a, a broad range of skills. Okay. And the hedgehog has that singular focus, that core principle that guides his actions. Right. It raises intriguing questions about how we approach learning and expertise. It does. Are we generalists with a wide range of interests and abilities, or are we specialists deeply immersed in a particular field? And is one approach inherently better than the other? Right. Right. It's like that saying, if you judge a fish by its ability to climb a tree, it will live its whole life believing that it is stupid. Yeah. Exactly. We, we need to value those diverse perspectives. Yeah. Uh, and recognize that wisdom can be found in the most unexpected places. It can. Whether it's from the cunning fox or the steadfast hedgehog. Absolutely. And maybe the, the key is to find a balance between those yeah. two approaches. Yeah. To cultivate a broad range of knowledge and skills like the fox, while also having that core set of values or principles that guide our actions like the hedgehog. Exactly. Yeah. And, and that balance seems to be a recurring theme throughout, yeah. throughout our mm -hmm. deep dive. It does. And speaking of challenging conventions and finding humor in unexpected places, our next theme takes aim at the powerful and the pompous, mocking excess and deflating grandiosity. Oh, yes. You know, it's, it's all about how humor can be used to expose hypocrisy, to challenge authority, and to bring the high and mighty down a peg or two. Exactly. Think of comedians who use satire to mm -hmm. poke fun yeah. at, you know, Politicians, yeah. right? Celebrities, yes, or or anyone who takes yeah. themselves too seriously. Yes, exactly. It it reminds me of, of the mockumentary. This is Spinal Tap. Oh, I love that. <laughs> oh, it's brilliant. That's it's so a brilliant funny. satire of You're the right. rock and roll world. It is. It is hilariously it is. exposing yeah. the excesses, the <laughs> egos, and the the absurdities of yeah. of the music and industry. It's, yes, it's laugh out loud funny. It also makes us question the cult of celebrity. Yes. And the ways in which we often elevate those in the spotlight. We do. Regardless of their actual talent or worth. Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's a classic example of how humor can be both entertaining and thought provoking at the same time. It really can. You know, by exaggerating certain traits or behaviors, satirists can kind of hold a mirror up to society, yeah. reflecting back those flaws and follies with with wit and intelligence. Yeah. And often that laughter can spark those important conversations about about the things we, we often take for granted. It can, yeah. It's it's like that saying, laughter is the best medicine. It is. It can help us cope with the absurdities of life, to, to find joy in the midst of chaos. Yeah. Yes. And it reminds us that we're all in this together. Absolutely. 
And sometimes that shared laughter can can bridge divides, connect us across those differences mm -hmm. and and remind us of our common humanity. Yeah. Yeah. Which leads us beautifully into our next theme, classical and innovation, progressives right. versus conservatives. Yes. And, and this theme explores that age old tension mm -hmm. between tradition and progress. Yes. You know, that push and pull between those who want to preserve the old ways and those who are really kind of pushing for change. Right. 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 And we see this dynamic playing out in all areas of life. From religion and politics to art and culture. It's like that constant dance between the familiar yes. and the unknown. Yes. The comfort of the past and the allure of the future. Yes. Think of think of the Catholic Church, for instance. You know, you have figures like Pope Francis, mm, right. who, who represents a more progressive wing, advocating for social justice, inclusivity, and a more compassionate approach to issues like mm. poverty and climate change. Yes. But yet, within that same institution, right. there are those who cling to more traditional interpretations of doctrine. Yeah, and they resist any changes they perceive as threatening the core tenets of the faith. Absolutely. And it's it, it's a reminder that even within seemingly unified institutions, yeah. there could be a wide spectrum of beliefs and perspective. There can, and that tension between tradition and innovation can be a source of both conflict and creativity. It can. It's like a, a double-edged sword in a way. It is. Yeah. And and that same dynamic plays out mm, in the art world as well. It does. You know, think of think of a composer like Philip Glass. Uh, right. Who's known for his minimalist style. Right. He's he's often credited with kind of bridging the gap between uh -huh. classical music and and more avant garde experimental forms. Right. right. Yeah. You know, his music can be both mesmerizing it can. Yeah. and challenging. Yeah. You know, drawing on those traditional structures and harmonies while also pushing the boundaries of Koyana's what's Watson? considered classical. It, right. It's a beautiful right. beautiful yeah. example of how artists can honor the past. Yes. While also creating something entirely new and innovative innovative exactly yeah and it, it it speaks to that idea that progress doesn't always mean discarding traditional together right. sometimes it's about finding a way to weave those two threads together yes yeah. creating something that's both familiar and fresh honoring the roots while also you know reaching towards the future exactly it's like building a bridge between those two shores connecting the old and the new creating a pathway for something fresh and vibrant to emerge. Yeah, it's a great analogy. And and that bridge building requires open-mindedness, empathy, and and a willingness to engage in in constructive dialogue. It does. Even even when there are disagreements. Absolutely. Which brings us to a theme that's particularly relevant in our current climate of polarization, liberal versus traditional conservative. Right. It's it's a topic that often sparks you know, heated debates and divisions. It does. But but it's important to remember that these labels, they don't always capture the the nuances of, yeah. of individual beliefs and values. Exactly. People are complex. They are. And their political views are rarely black and white. That's right. Think of think of someone like Jordan Peterson, uh, yeah. who's who's become a controversial figure in recent years. He has. He's he's often labeled as a conservative. But his work also resonates with people from from across the political spectrum. It does. He challenges you know, conventional thinking, both on the left and the right. He does. And and <laughs> encourages people to to take responsibility for their own lives and to strive for personal growth and meaning. Yes. Yeah. And it really highlights the limitations of these binary labels, liberal and conservative. Yeah. They can be useful shorthand, but they can also oversimplify complex issues. Yeah. And prevent us from engaging in in meaningful dialogue. Right. So it's about recognizing that even within seemingly opposing ideologies, yeah. there can be common ground. Absolutely. Shared values. Yeah. That's true. That's yeah, true. You know, yeah. you know, as we've been exploring these diverse things, yeah. it's striking how many of them challenge binary thinking. Yes. You know, urging us to look beyond yeah. simple categories and embrace the complexity and nuance of the human experience. Exactly. And that complexity is is often where the the richest humor and the most profound wisdom reside. It is. It's it's in those messy, unpredictable spaces yeah. where where different perspectives collide that that we find the greatest opportunities for growth, connection, right. and transformation. So right. it feels right. like we've embarked on this whirlwind intellectual adventure. Yeah. Traversing a landscape of of 
ideas and perspectives that are, that yeah. are thought provoking yeah. yes. and entertaining. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. But but our journey uh-huh. isn't over yet. Right. We we still have some some fascinating mm-hmm. territory to explore. I'm excited. Welcome Let's go. back to your <laughs> Welcome deep back dive. to your deep dive. <laughs> It's it's incredible how all these different themes, you know, humor, wisdom, social change, they all keep kind of weaving together. They do, don't they? It's like it's like we're uncovering this hidden tapestry. Yeah. And and with every thread we pull, we reveal these unexpected connections and, and deeper meanings. Right. right. It's really a testament to the interconnectedness of all things, wouldn't you say? Yeah, it is. And it reminds us that wisdom can often be found in the most unexpected places. Yeah. Often disguised in laughter or or cloaked in absurdity. Right, right. Which which brings us to a theme that I think perfectly embodies this idea: clowns and kings. Clowns that and is kings. a a fascinating juxtaposition. It is, isn't it? Those who hold power and yes. those who mock it. Yeah. Yes, they exist in this delicate dance. I Absolutely. Think. You know, throughout history, clowns haven't just been entertainers; they've actually been social commentators Mm -hmm. using humor to point out the follies of of those in authority right you know think of think of the court jesters right you know the ones who could actually get away with saying things that that no one else dared to utter yeah you know they they used wit and laughter to challenge the king's perspective often revealing uncomfortable truths that that others were were simply too afraid to voice right like that saying there's no fool like an old fool yeah but sometimes the fool is the only one who can see the truth exactly. clearly. Exactly. Yes. They're not bound by the same social conventions. Right. So they can speak their minds, even if it makes those in power uncomfortable. Precisely. And and that willingness to challenge authority, even through humor, can be incredibly powerful. Yeah. It, it can make us question our assumptions. It can expose hypocrisy yeah and ultimately lead to positive change right it's a reminder that humor can be a tool for social critique yeah a way to hold up a mirror to society and reveal its absurdities exactly and and sometimes those who who seem foolish on the surface are the ones who actually possess the the deepest wisdom it's it's about recognizing that that wisdom isn't always found in in those halls of power right. or in those academic institutions right. sometimes it's found in the laughter of the gesture yeah. In the unexpected twist of a joke, in the absurdity of a situation that forces us to see the world from a whole new perspective. It does, yeah. That that actually makes me think of another theme we're exploring. Storytellers, high art, and the classical bridge. Oh, yes. It's about how artists and storytellers draw inspiration from the past. Yes. While, while also creating something entirely new. Yes. Bridging that gap between, you know, tradition and and innovation right think of think of musicians like kate bush peter gabriel philip glass My right heroes. you know they've they've yeah. all woven elements of of classical music right, into their work yeah blending it with with contemporary sounds and, and those experimental techniques to yeah. create something that's that's both familiar and groundbreaking exactly they're building bridges between different worlds, like honoring the past while pushing music forward yeah. in new directions and just like yeah, those really musicians, exciting. spiritual teachers often use mm-hmm. stories and parables comes the to, yeah. to convey Those deeper ones. truths. You know, they, they draw on that. those ancient wisdom traditions yeah. to to address those modern concerns. Mm. And, and these stories, yeah. they act as vessels yeah. carrying timeless wisdom mm. across generations. They do, yeah. Making it, making it relatable and relevant to, to contemporary audiences. Right. right. It's like the wisdom traditions of the world are having an ongoing conversation across time and culture. Yeah. Like, you know, using stories yeah. as their common language. Exactly. Yeah. And, and through those stories, we, we gain insights into, into the human condition. That, yes. that transcend time and place. Absolutely, and those insights can can help us navigate the inevitable changes that that life throws our way. They can, which brings us to to our next theme: winds, winds of change. change. Right, <laughs> and and this theme really speaks to the the ever changing nature of life. It does the ebb and flow. Yeah, the the cycles of growth and decay. Right, you know we can either resist those changes, cling to what we know, and and kind of get swept away. 
Yeah. Or, or we can learn to ride the waves, mm -hmm. finding the opportunities within those challenges mm -hmm. and emerging stronger and wiser on the other side. Right. Imagine, imagine yourself standing on a hilltop, okay. you know, feeling the wind whipping all around you. Yeah. Instead of kind of fighting against it, you spread your arms wide. Yeah. You know, you, you embrace the force of nature. Right. You, you allow it to guide you on your journey. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful image of surrender, of letting yeah. go of control. Yeah. Of trusting that even amidst all the chaos, yes. there's a deeper wisdom guiding our path. And, and sometimes those winds of change can can lead us to these unexpected destinations. They can. To to new experiences that that challenge our assumptions and expand our horizons. Right. Think of think of your own experience, you know, hitchhiking across Europe. Yeah. You you set out with a plan. Yeah. But you were also huh. open to those detours. I was. To those chance encounters. Oh, yeah. To to the kindness of strangers. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. It was a, a leap of faith, trusting that, you know, the universe would, would kind of guide my path. Yes. And it did. It led you to those incredible experiences, unexpected connections, and a much deeper understanding of yourself and the world. It's a it's a reminder that sometimes the the most Profound lessons are learned when we step outside of our comfort zones. They are. We embrace the unknown. Yeah. And we allow mm. life to surprise us. We do. You know, as as we've been kind of delving into these diverse themes. Yeah. I'm I'm struck by how they all seem to converge on this this idea of of embracing uncertainty. Yeah, of finding wisdom in those unexpected places and recognizing the interconnectedness of all things. It's it's a beautiful synthesis, isn't it? Mm. And Perhaps the most important takeaway is that recognition that that humor, wisdom, societal reform, yeah. the power of connection, the importance of balance, the inevitability of change. These these aren't separate concepts. They're all intricately intertwined. They are. You know, humor can be a vehicle for wisdom. It can. It can. Challenging norms can lead to greater balance. Yeah. And, and those acts of kindness, no matter how small, can ripple outwards. Right. Creating positive change in the world. Yeah, absolutely. So as we as we wrap up our deep dive today, we, we leave you with this question to ponder. What small act of kindness, connection, or even self-care can you commit to this week? Yeah. To create that positive change and foster greater balance in your own life. It's a great question. Remember, even the smallest ripple can create a wave of change. It can. Stay curious, keep exploring, and never be afraid to challenge that status quo. Absolutely. Even if it means ruffling a few feathers along the way. And who knows, you might just discover that the fool is often the wisest of them all. <laughs> Thanks for joining us for another deep dive. 